Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for coming in this rainy afternoon to hear about um, the various MySQL proxies. Um, before we start, I'm curious to know how many here use MySQL router, or have tried to use it at least. Okay, uh, what about uh, proxy SQL? Oh wow. And what about MariaDB max scale? Okay, excellent. So, um, good, so we can start in 20 minutes. So I am, I'm Colin, I work uh, at uh, Percona Inc. And before that I was at uh, MariaDB as well, doing stuff on MariaDB server. So, you know, quick question is, what is a proxy? Basically, it's a very lightweight application between the clients and the server. It has to be lightweight because otherwise you introduce latency for not much uh, gains. And there have been benchmarks done by multiple people, so you can see benchmarks against other proxies to see you know, how lightweight it is. And typically, some proxies will use things like uh, ePoll or, and so forth, and the threading will change as well. It is largely a, a, a a man in the middle, you yourself install between a client and server. And of course, it can communicate with one many clients as well as many server backends. And uh, this idea of proxies is uh, not very new. So this is an image taken from Giuseppe Magia from uh, 2007. And he couldn't join us this year at FOSDEM. But um, this is an image giving you an idea of what a proxy does and uh, leading you on to the fact that there is this thing called MySQL proxy. MySQL proxy was around 10 years ago. It was probably the first ever MySQL proxy out there. It had an embedded Lua interpreter. Generally, you could define what it could do with query passing through it. And uh, the Lua interpreter was handy because back then, a lot of people would played this game called the World of Warcraft. And a lot of people could un know how to script in Lua. So you could write really short Lua scripts for um, MySQL proxy. And today, um, other, other databases with embedded uh, Lua interpreter include things like Terran tool. Um, it is still used in MySQL Enterprise Monitor, uh, from what I gather. And uh, the Lua was extremely flexible. You could rewrite queries. You could add statements, you could filter, and you could just write these short chunks of Lua code. Lua was very easy to pick up and uh, very easy to write for. It is uh, unfortunate that this product is sort, sort of uh, archived now, but you know, ne never fear, because there are now multiple other products for you to, to use. So we'll start with MariaDB MaxScale because uh, I think this was, um, by and large, the uh, first GA-ready proxy out there. It became GA in uh, January of 2015. And the idea was percolating for a lot longer before that. And there were multiple um, alpha and beta releases uh, before that. It is a level 7 proxy router. It understands the MySQL protocol. It has a fully pluggable architecture. So what MaxScale does is it monitors the state of all database nodes constantly. And you can also react to um, monitoring based information or hints of, or even from filters. So you know, MaxScale largely became sort of this uh, Swiss army knife, right? It was extremely pluggable. Um, you could also do things like logging. You could write to other backends besides MySQL. The idea of MaxScale was such that it should be able for you to translate even to other non-MySQL backends if, if need be. Um, it also has a DB firewall filter, which you can use. Because you can't parse SQL through regular expressions. You actually need to use a parse tree. You can feed it uh, regex, but the parse tree needs to exist. Uh, you could also route via hints. You could rewrite queries. And all, all this is, is still possible. And the query level analysis, you could also filter logs. You could also call external tools with MaxScale, things like uh, MariaDB Replication Manager or even MHA via, via scripting. It also provided uh, schema-based sharding. One of the most popular use cases for MaxScale 
that uh, became rather famous was the uh, binary log server popularized by booking.com. So a couple of talks ago, Jean-Francois, uh, he's got um, excellent talks about using the bin log server. And the idea there was to not use intermediate masters. So you would have masters served by max scale and then get all the slaves to read off max scale. And uh, this, this has been obviously used in production and um, other um, database, heavy users of databases have also got their own versions of bin log servers that are maybe not open source yet. And one of the most popular use cases were, was just to put it sitting in front of a three node Galera cluster, three node being the minimum to start a Galera cluster. And uh, the max scales from 1.0 right up to 1.4 uh, is linked against uh, MySQL client library, so either libMySQL client or libMariaDB client, because you do need to have access to the parser. Um, and for what it is worth, it is still getting development. Um, the the 1.4 branch is still getting development. If you pay attention to the GitHub tree, you'll realize that uh, there should have been a release on the 1st of February uh, to fix um, uh, the blocking of prepared statements, but that release hasn't been, been out yet. MaxScale also managed to create some kind of a ecosystem around it. Um, the first known plugin uh, was a Kafka backend written by Eve Trudeau. Um, if you look at GitHub logs, it started probably around February of 2015, so shortly about a month after it became GA, and was announced around middle of that year. Uh, and the context obviously was to have you know real-time change data capture that would come in um, via uh, Mac, your MaxScale client to a Kafka backend, and you'd see this only uh, appear in MaxScale 2.0, which was something that got released in like August or September of 2016. And that was also the first known credible fork uh, called Airbnb MaxScale. Um, I say credible because you may have read news articles about another fork called GPL Scale. And uh, that, that was just a uh, you know, fork out of anger, I think. It was not a real fork that you could use. And um, Airbnb, MaxScale, the idea was to um, have a database proxy focusing on connection pooling, reduce the number of direct connections to their um, MySQL database. They deployed Airbnb, MaxScale on all of Airbnb uh, from early 2016. And it's pretty much powering all MySQL that touches it there. And some of the features uh, I've listed up there. And generally speaking, if a client um, completes a successful authentication uh, with a backend MySQL server, Airbnb MaxScale will then serve the link between uh, the backend connections and the uh, client connections and park it in a connection pool itself of the uh, backend server. Now, um, denialist query rejection as an addition for them was quite important because Sometimes they use uh, Ruby, and the Ruby VM will, will trash. And uh, when it trashes, uh, they've also seen um, bad queries go to do delete where zero equals zero. And uh, MaxSQL would actually stop, stop that from happening. This was obviously no fault of, of MySQL. It was, it was fault of you know, their Ruby VM crashing. And this is not a problem that only Airbnb faced. Other people have faced it too. So having uh, Airbnb MaxSQL is quite quite useful. So we are at FOSDEM, and this is a free and open source conference, so I have to apologize that I spoke about MaxScale for, for length. But the abstract did say I was going to speak about MaxScale. So uh, I would be cheating you if I didn't. Um, so MaxScale 2.0 um, came out uh, August or, or September of 2016. Same GitHub repository. Uh, it is not linked against the MySQL client libraries any longer. It's uh, replaced with SQLite, and SQLite is now known to um, par parse MySQL. You can also do change data capture uh, to Kafka. You can also push your binary log events to Avro or JSON. But the most important thing was that the license had changed. It went from GPL v2 to this thing known as the business source license. Um, how many of you are familiar with the business source license? Well, that's quite a lot of you. Hmm? It, was in the news, it, was it was in the news, yeah, hard to avoid, yes, okay. So the business source license is time delayed open source. It is uh, not the first time this has been tried. GoScript and the Aladdin license did this as well. It was GPL after a year during the GoScript days. 
In this case, um, they tell you you are not allowed to use MaxScale in production if you have, well, more than three database server instances uh, in, in a free fashion. I don't know how that is enforced except through this use limitation. And uh, after uh, three years, it becomes GPL. And uh, Richard Stallman himself, uh, back in the day, during the Ghost Trip Aladdin license uh, debacle, he said he, you know, he, he considered it a problematic compromise because it gave us free software after a year. But thankfully, that was back in the GhostScript Aladdin days. I'm guessing many of you don't even remember GhostScript or Aladdin because that was um, in the mid-90s when free software was sort of just sort of becoming a bit more famous. Uh, so, you know, thankfully we have choice now. MySQL router, uh, fully GPL v2, so thank you Oracle. Um, it, it became GA in October of 2015, and uh, they made a labs release in about a month before that. And I guess they had, if you look at the release notes, you also see that they had internal releases, so they were playing with this for a while. Um, the idea there is obviously to do transparent routing between all applications and backend MySQL servers. They also have a plugin interface via a, a, a harness that you can use. So it, the harness provides dependency tracking, loading and unloading of plugins, uh, configuration, logging framework, and so forth. It can do failover. It can do load balancing. Um, it can also distribute uh, application connections in a round robin fashion. So it'll forward the MySQL packets uh, to a backend server without ever inspecting or modifying them. So you get maximum throughput. And um, I think one of the coolest things is that this is one of the uh, key features that you need if you wanted to start playing around with uh, MySQL in ODB cluster. And uh, your host, Frederick, has actually got a less than five minute video on, on YouTube that you could watch in your own time. So just search for MySQL in ODB cluster on YouTube and uh, you will be able to see it. It's a very good video about how you can use um, MySQL with router and group replication and the new shell, which I'm guessing there were talks about, or will be talks about. And then there is Proxy SQL. The ma main author, Rene, is actually in the audience. Uh, it has been stable since December 2015. There has been many times at many conferences that uh, people did talk about Proxy SQL. I would say 2015 was the year we went full circle on proxies, right? Because we had three proxies become GA in, in one year. And the selling point for this is it's by DBAs for DBAs. And uh, at Percona, we obviously like uh, proxy SQL a lot. So we've included it inside of Percona HDB cluster 5.7. We've also got a, pro a proxy SQL admin tool that you can use to, um, for, for configuring your PXEs to have proxy SQL in front of it. And the idea behind this, is, of course, is to you know, improve your database operations, have, have HA topologies, and, and so forth. It also does things like connection pooling, read-write splitting, things you'd expect from a proxy. It, I think the very important things for me, as opposed to just going through this entire list, is that it's runtime reconfigurable, so you don't have to um, restart your proxy SQL. This is extremely friendly for users, our DBAs. And uh, the monitoring built-in is also extremely useful. Um, this monitoring can also then be you know, pushed out to things like uh, Percona monitoring and management and so forth, or consumed by other things. And yeah, it does you know, query rewriting. And there have been multiple um, blog posts and performance tests done on this. And I think one of the best uh, things about Proxy SQL is that Rene has spent some time comparing proxy SQL to um, other proxies out there, including HAProxy, Nginx, and he released this sometime in uh, January of this year. So well worth taking a look at this comparison because, hey, um, and if you find a problem with said comparison, you're always more than welcome to actually report a bug on the mailing list. Proxy SQL, of course, has a few missing features if you want to compare it to MaxScale. Uh, one of them is front-end SSL encryption, so that's going from client SSL encryption to the proxy to the application. It does support back-end SSL encryption, and there is an open issue, issue 891. This is kind of important for like HIPAA environments and, and so forth, and uh, I believe it is on the roadmap. It will get fixed in time, so if you, if you care, you can track this on, on GitHub. It, there is no bin log router, and uh, from what I understand, 
you know, very, very large uh, internet sites may, may open up their bin log routers um, so for you to end up using. If you want to stream binary logs to Kafka, there's this wonderful thing called Maxwell's Daemon that you can also use. Um, so it's, an, it's another tool that is actually used in production. And bin logs to Avro. How many here use Avro, out of curiosity? That's what I thought. <laughs> And I think the cool thing about Proxy SQL is um, it has lots of great resources. It's great when other people talk about your project, not just you talking about your project. And you know, we see things. Uh, we see Mark, Marco Tusa have uh, extensive blog. Several Nines Cluster Control also works with, pro uh, with Proxy SQL, and they, they talk a lot about it and how you can use Cluster Control. PCN talks about it. Percona obviously talks a lot about it. So you can you know get a lot of resources. And you know, since we are at, at FOSDEM, uh, it's also worth talking about you know the health of these projects. Uh, so they're all at GitHub, and um, you know, Maxkill has, has been around probably the longest. Router, like every other uh, MySQL software, is is not really developed in the open, so it is sort of dumped uh, onto GitHub uh, from time to time, I guess, which is why you may see. Uh, less contributors and so forth, but that's that's in no way uh, you know denigration of how the software is being developed. It's just a, a different process, and uh, Proxy SQL um, also has has a bunch of you know many stars, multiple forks. The other thing is to see you know pull requests. There are a lot of pull requests on Proxy SQL uh, as well. So, do 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 these statistics tell you that the, the project is healthy? Kind of. If you see regular commits, issues being closed, it shows that people care. The, the GitHub has this other very interesting thing called punch card. And I thought this was kind of appropriate for FOSDEM as well, because this is the punch card for MaxScale, which you see lots and lots of activity from Monday to Friday during working hours. Seems fair. This is the punch card for proxy SQL, where you see activity all the time. <laughs> Not because Rene is madly typing away. There are many other contributors to, to this. But I think this is sort of the spirit of open source, is you also work not when you're paid to work on it. You, you work on it because you love working on it. And you improve it. And that shows in the product. And uh, a metric that I don't think is a metric but if you cared about Google Trends, uh, this is a joke, of course. You know, you, you, this is insert insert time to laugh. Is uh, this Google Trend thing, and the red is proxy SQL, and um, it starts spiking a lot in August of 2016. And I'm guessing you all read the news and, and know why. So, what do you use as we uh, come to wrap this up? I think MySQL router is going to be very interesting going forward. Uh, so it is something to definitely watch. I think Proxy SQL is great for you to use today because it's got a lot of support. It's well integrated. It works with other additional tools like PMM and so forth. And if you need the binary log router today before someone else makes a binary log router open source, there is GPL MaxScale that you can use that that works, and uh, I highly recommend you if you if you need a, a bin log router to, to use that. But there's also one other consideration to think about: is that what server are you using? If you are using MySQL and Pacona server, you can use all these tools, and it wouldn't be a problem. If you're using MariaDB server, it is pretty obvious MySQL router will not work for you. So you. So you're, that, what, that one choice is, is now gone. And that would only leave you the option of proxy SQL and, and max scale. So again, uh, server choices also play a role. And you know, I would be remiss not to mention um, Vitesse. I didn't put that in the abstract, but Vitesse doesn't sell itself as a proxy either. Um, it is a database clustering solution for horizontally you know, scaling MySQL. And it powers YouTube. That alone should you know, make you sort of open your eyes so if you go to vitesse.io, you will actually be able to try this out with you know, something like Kubernetes. You don't have to run it in the cloud. You can run it yourself. And if you run it yourself, you, know, you install something like etcd or Zookeeper, so you also ensure your cluster view is always up to date. 
Vitess is definitely interesting uh, uh, because it doesn't it makes connections using very lightweight Bison that each connection uh, only uses 32 kilobytes of RAM. This is very unlike uh, regular MySQL connections where they could be anywhere between 256 kilobytes of RAM to even 3 megs. It also does the whole rewriting of queries so you can, you know, no limit clause, no problem. You can make sure that you get, you get the query, you don't see a limit, you add, you add it automatically. So, uh, and Vitesse of course works with MySQL and MariaDB uh, uh, as well. So there are a bunch of resources um, that are worth taking a look at. The uh, proxy SQL Google group is extremely active. Uh, the MariaDB MaxScale Google group is also quite active. MySQL router doesn't have a mailing list, but it has this forum which you need to log in to, to use. I'm not a huge fan of forums, but it's a, it is a discussion place. And uh, the Vitesse forum is extremely active as well, and they, they have a Slack group as well, so you can join their Slack group and, and chat. I'm guessing not many people here like to use Slack. <laughs> we, are, we are at Fast Yes. <laughs> okay, so before I, before I wrap it up, um, <laughs> insert ad. Uh, Percona Live, if, you've, if you're interested in you know, MySQL, you should probably be there, and you get your 30% discount if you use that code. <laughs> um, 20 minutes and 43 seconds. Thank you. I, I'm open for questions. <laughs> uh, I'm open for questions if you have any or if you plan to shuffle. Yes. Can the proxy rewrite a subselect to a join, for example? Why do you want to rewrite subselects? Now, if you use MySQL 5.6 or MariaDB 10, they can process subselects. <laughs> join is more performant. Hmm, That's a, that, that is a good question. I've not had to do this uh, recently because I, I trust the optimizer, but this is possible, maybe, Rene? <laughs> If you use regular expressions, you could probably get, get it going. But yeah, I, I don't think you need to now because it kind of just works in the optimizer. Trust the optimizer. Any other questions? Here. Oh, sorry. I couldn't see. Yeah, so the question is, what if you want to do sharding? And yeah, so they do like range-based sharding, so you can get some, some level of sharding. It's not a proper sharding solution, but you can get some level of sharding. And uh, tools, yes, um, they, they do. Well, this router, it kind, not, not, not yet, but it's in the roadmap. <laughs> yeah, so the, the other two do. And Vitesse obviously does um, sharding too, but much harder to set up. By schema, yes. So it's, they have their own limitations in terms of sharding. Question. So the question is, where would you put the proxy uh, on the application servers or dedicated servers or and the advantages and disadvantages? You, if you're going to use it for like you know load balancing, um, maybe you want to keep it on a dedicated server. I, I would say dedicated would make more sense in case your application server goes down or you know runs out of memory and kills your proxy. So I just keep it on dedicated machines. Though from what it's worth. Um, it was from uh, Alkin and Rene. Uh, a while back, they made a presentation about how Proxy SQL has one Proxy SQL instance has you know hundreds of servers sitting b below it as well, and and it works in production. So I, I would just use a dedicated machine overall. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.